What is going on, everyone? Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Finally done with this little road trip we did for the last couple weeks, and we're doing quarterback rankings right now going into week seven. Uh, week six, we saw Kenji Bahar come back. Pretty excited for him. A little bit of regression from MBT, but obviously Alex Magoo, player of the week for the USFL, take take the reins of the Stallions and ride, it, ride up to Michigan and put a beating on the Panthers. Without further ado, let's make it happen. Coming in at number nine, I got James Morgan from the Pittsburgh Maulers. Last week he was unranked. He's been on the sideline in a couple, couple weeks, um, went nine of 19, 98 passing yards, zero touchdown, two picks, one rushing attempt, eight rushing yards. Morgan got another opportunity this week. Didn't really do much with it. Uh, it was kind of garbage time. It looked like they were at the point in the game in which they were just kind of trying to figure things out. Nothing really too sexy on his performance. Uh, by that time, it seemed like the uh, Maulers kind of knew where they stood. You know, want to get Troy Williams out. No reason why to put him in. I mean, Morgan's a big disappointment this year. Came in at number 10. You know, didn't think he'd light up the league, but thought he'd show enough to be a serviceable quarterback. Right now, you can kind of think maybe he was doing too much, trying to make a claim for himself. Overall, not totally impressed. Obviously, this is the Troy Williams show. He was moving up the rankings the last couple of weeks. You know, you're, you're entitled to have a bad game here and there, and that's really what happened. Coming in at number eight, Kyle Lawletta, New Jersey Generals. Last week, I am at five, 17 of 30, 177, one touchdown, one pick, four rushing attempts, 24 rushing yards, and a fumble. About 18 to 17 or 18 of those yards came on one broken play that Lawletta. Uh, manufactured. It was a great play. You know, got through a lot of strength, a lot of quickness, got a first down. But it just wasn't enough. Obviously, they lost 10 to 16, uh, 16 to the Gamblers. Gamblers are a different team. You know, last year they lost those games. This year they win those games. We, as fans, media alike, we all are very curious on the status of DeAndre Johnson. This offense is clicking when Johnson's, Johnson's there. There was an injury in week five. You know, Loletta came in last week, did a pretty good uh, pretty good job, had a pick that wasn't really his fault. This week did some good things, and then overall it took him a while. Like going through the second quarter, I think he was 4 of 12 at one point. It just did not look like an effective passing game. But you got to think, too, Loletta hasn't played football in over a year. Last year he was at the Maulers. So we could see – maybe some progression going into next week, a little bit more comfortability. But overall, if Lallette is playing, obviously the, the generals don't have their best guy out there. Crazy, I know, crazy insight with that, with uh, QB talk. But this offense is going to ride or die with DeAndre Johnson. We've seen his improvements as a passer. You got to give this guy the keys to the offense if he's 75% healthy, especially in a playoff run. Coming in at number seven, it's – Josh Love, Michigan Panthers. Last week I had him at number nine. Uh, he went 20 of 34, 222 passing yards, one touchdown, no picks, three rushing attempts, five rushing rushing yards. First time for him in a couple of weeks to get the full dosage of Josh Love. Um, Mobility-wise, you know, he's he is who he is. You know, be a little bit shifty here and there. Had some mental blunders, um, this fake spike, there was a miscommunication between him and the wide receivers, his OC. It didn't look too too sexy at the end of the half, especially, you know, they left about 13 points on the field, I counted, uh, between possible touchdowns and field goals that they, they didn't get. I don't know how much more Josh Love we, we are going to see. Um, he's got a great connection with Joe Walker and – and Trey Quinn, Trey Quinn especially, put up over 100 yards this week. But in the end, the people are shouting for Eric Barrier. Um, you know, everyone in the North Division has a chance to compete and get into the playoffs. The Stars are one game up, but they're not, you know, playing the best football, playing they're winning in spite of themselves, if that makes sense. So right now, you know, the Panthers – Offensive coaches, Eric Marty, has a decision to make. Do we roll the dice with EB or do we keep going with Josh Love? Coming in at number six, you got Troy Williams. Last week I had him at three. 
13 of 19, 145 passing yards, no TDs, one pick, four rushing attempts, seven rushing yards. Lowest rushing output for Williams. I mean, his strength is his legs. You know, him and Gaither and Isaiah Henney have a good thing. But there was a lot of neglect um, for the running backs this week. Uh, Garrett Groshek only had one carry. Williams is the best when he's using his legs. Use more read option. Let him scramble around. Spread the field out. Let him make plays. I know that Mueller's offensive line isn't the most most stable unit outside of Terry Poole, but in the end, you have one of the most athletic guys in this league. Let him do what he does. Missed a couple easy throws, um, in my opinion. Had some dump offs at the stocky and another tight end. Uh, that's kind of his, you know, something he can do when he's moving around and whatnot. Find a little check down that can go for 15 plus yards. In the end. Not the most effective out, outing for him. He needs to be better. I don't think there's any any talk about that. As we saw, talked about with Love, this team is still in the hunt. I don't think they're a championship team by any means, but you can always sneak in no matter what, especially in these 10-game seasons. Coming in at number five, I don't know if you guys can know, know this. There's a little bit of a Norton bias here. I cover the Panthers, or, you know, the team I like to watch, but got to be as fair as we can. It's Case Cookies, Philadelphia Stars. Last week I had him at 7, 17 of 27, 238, zero touchdowns, two picks, nine rushing attempts, 43 rushing yards, and a fumble. I mean, he was probably the hardest receiver to evaluate. I saw a lot of drops. That interception that he threw um, was inside the five. Devin Gray could have made a play on it. Uh, a couple of drops from his receivers, bad ones, and then two rushing touchdowns that were called back. Really changes the outcome of the game. Granted, they won, but, I mean, this this offensive line continues to kill this poor guy. And we're not going to see the true case cookies that we saw in 2022 until this offensive line gets shored up. Now, I don't know if case cookies is going to be the same guy as far as, like, NFL looks going into this year. I think a lot of the teams are not going to want to deal with it, him. But he's showed a lot of toughness this year, been hit way more times than anyone deserves. I think Cookus is going to will the Stars to a playoff playoff berth. And if they get into the playoffs by attrition, you know, they could get to the championship because at this point, no one in the North is proving they belong in that big game. Coming in at number four, I hate to put this guy here, but it's McLeod Bethel Thompson from the Breakers. Last week I had him at one. Pretty much had him at one this whole year. He went 22 of 38, 190 passing yards, one TD, two picks, zero rushing attempts, zero rushing yards. I mean, everyone's entitled to a bad game, right? This is probably his first one. Um, something I talked on the Marcast today was, are we seeing some fatigue a little bit? Uh, he looked a little uncomfortable, but this man's been played in 18, 18 games last year, plus the playoffs, so he's at 20, 21 games. Uh Moving forward, like, eventually all this fatigue. So the CFL season starts in in May, you know, preseason and all that stuff. Goes to November for him, and now he's back playing football in March. It's not the most effective method for him. I don't know if he'll, you know, if there's a fatigue thing, you know, but everyone's entitled for an off day. I saw a couple drops by Sage Surratt. Uh, D. Anderson had a bad drop that he could have walked into the end zone. Uh, Johnny Dixon had a bad drop. And that changes the course of the game. You go from, you know, first down inside the 20, you can run the ball with West Hills to now you're at third and 10, second and 10. It changes the aspect of the game. I'm not out on MBT, but at the same time, I understand that, you know, there are some limitations. Coming at number three, Cole Kelly. Last week I am at four. I've probably had Cole Kelly at four from – Week week five, maybe, or excuse me, week four till now. I think he's been there the last couple weeks. And I've talked about this on multiple facets. It's the ability for Kelly to avoid the sack and keep those th- second and tens and third and tens. And that could become a second and 17 or a third and 17 because of how big he is and how hard he is to break down. He went 14 of 24, 135. Uh, one touchdown, 10 rushing attempts, 21 rushing yards, a fumble. I think he's the calming force. Him and Papali have a really good thing going. Him and Derek Dillon have a really good thing going. A 
a lot of these games weren't the sexiest offensive outputs. It was probably the worst quarterback play overall. But in as a whole, we've got we've gotten six good weeks of quarterback – or excuse me, five other good weeks of quarterback play. You know, it's been the MBT and Magoo show for a while. But Kelly and Bahar are that next tier of quarterbacks, in my opinion. And he put together another solid performance, and which is why the showboats won. Third game in a row. Coming at number two, I got Kenji Bahar. Last week he was unranked. The previous week I had him at three. 19 of 29, 130. No touchdowns, no picks. One rushing attempt, two rushing yards. It was all the Bahar show um, for for the gamblers. You know, they didn't go to Terry Wilson or Montel Cozart. Uh, the gamblers dealt with some untimely penalties, just like the Stars did. A lot of penalties for Cookus and that company up there. But – we saw him moving around in the pocket, and not so much his rushing ability, but just the ability to buy some time. He hit Clint Sig on three three receptions that led to a first down. Sig had four four um, four receptions total, and each time they were they were his second and third option. You know, bought some time, found Sig. Sig made some plays. He had three three first downs. Really enjoyable experience to watch Bahar play. Each week he gets a little bit better. This is his, that was his eighth professional start. He can't knock this kid at all. He's he's getting more comfortable, and the Gamblers are winning. And this South Division is going to be real tough. You know, at times last year we thought, you know, that third team, the Bandits, could do something, but the Breakers took care of business. This year it's the Gamblers that are kind of vying for a shot at the playoffs. But all four teams are competitive, which is what you want to see. Coming in at number one, I got Alex Magoo. Last week I had him at two. 19 of 24, 133, two touchdowns, zero picks, 11 rushing attempts, 82 rushing yards, and a touchdown. It's Magoo magic, man. The FIU guy, this guy knows what to do. He's a stud. Each week, like Bahar, he's getting better. He started three games last year, a bunch of injuries last year. This year, he's got these stallions primed to go back to the championship. His mobility is what gets me, man, is that he is so shifty in that pocket. He's able to run around. He's the next step above Bahar, um, except this dude can take off with his legs. His passing ability has gotten a lot better this year, um, and it's just a privilege to watch him play, man. That's, that's that's really what it's coming down to. He's been a great leader for this team. You know, he's every week he's finding a new way to do it. This week it was a lot of running around it behind the line of scrimmage and then finding – you know, running back to dump dump pass off to, you know, even when Jay Sternberger is covered, you got, uh, you know, so many different guys, you know, Davion Davis, Austin Watkins, Myron Mitchell. That's kind of what's, you know, making this team. This is a very well put together team. Zach Potter and Skip Holtz have done a great job and they're showing it week in and week out. Overall, guys, that's my quarterback rankings for week six going into week seven. I appreciate you guys tuning in as always. Last video didn't do as great. Um, you know, some do better than others. If you guys can always leave a comment, subscribe, uh, you know, share around. It really helps.